What's rolling brawlers? Leave the hunt here with all the cheese and your things. TCG back with a Bakugan deck profile. Here to show off my Ventus Sync deck from the Jet Kuso tournament in Fort Worth at the Fanboys Marketplace. So uh, just to show you real quick, there was a ban list. Uh, just so you know in mind that this was, there was, you know, some little limitations. Dragonoid Maximus was banned. Um, not the Ventus one, but the, uh, you know, the Maximus. Uh, Baku Treasure was banned, so that it did affect me. Liquid Fireplate was banned, um, all the blind box stuff, a Destroyer, and a couple other things I can't remember off the top of my head. I'll just show you right here, but yeah. So, I'll just go ahead and show you my Ventus Sync deck profile that I did. I guess I'll go ahead and start off with the Bakugan first. Uh, of course, so this is a Ventus Sync. So you know that you are playing the uh, Dragonoid Ventus. And of course, this one is going to be having the 600, uh, 650 Magic, and then the 600 uh, Helix with a negative 3. Of course, you know, this is one of the staple Bakugan, always very good. Can sometimes double core, believe it or not, this thing kind of saved me in a double core situation. I guess I think Meganic, I can't remember, but yeah. <clears throat> so, if it didn't double core, I probably would have lost. This is obviously one of the Bakugan. So, we'll show off another one here. Is obviously the Hydrus, Hydrus core, obviously very, very, um, you know, versatile. It does get the boost off the Helix, so, and then that Helix is going to be, he's sleepy sometimes, sorry. It's going to be the 600 Helix, and it is going to have the 150 plus 2 Green Fist. And um, uh, this is a very good Bakugan. This is a 1500 all the time. So uh, granted, if it doesn't get that core, it does kind of like mess it up. But when you're playing uh, the sync portion of this deck, it does kind of like even out, and it doesn't affect it too much when it comes to certain, you know, uh, like core swaps and stuff like that. So on to the last Bakugan. And I know I used to play Falcon on this deck, but honestly... Um, given the little, the matchup and like the, uh, because it was one out of one brawls and the fact that, um, the Baku Treasure was, um, banned out of this tournament. So it, the consistency of this deck was a little bit nerfed. So running Falcon was kind of too risky in my opinion, although I kind of regret not doing it because I was seeing a lot of nature's power boxified at the tournament. So, but this, the last Bakugan is going to be the Batrix Ultra and I know, right? Batrix Ultra, where did this come from? Batarkus? What, what the heck? What, what is this? Isn't this like a, a very sought after Bakugan? You can thank the nerdy friends for this. They let me use it. So we're running the uh, 400 Aventus and Darkest Shield with it, and the obviously 600 negative 3 Helix. So, why these Bakugan? Well, you'll find out why. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. Obviously, you guys know that Batrix is a 4. Well, you don't know, but here, Batrix is a 600 and a 4. So you can get a 1200 on the uh, Helix and having the. Dragonoid, obviously he can get to 1250 on the uh, magic, and then you know that a uh, Hydra's core can get to 1500, so we'll just go ahead and move on from this. So on to the deck, and honestly, uh, like I said, there were those limitations to the deck, so I, I kind of like, you know, did my best with what I had going on. And so, uh, at first, as our heroes, we've got three Shun. Yes, three Shun uh, Resurgence. Why? Because drawing cards is good. Uh, turn three, you kind of want to just do it if you can take a hit. Usually you can, because turn three is, you know, pretty strong for you, so... We got three shuns here, three bat, uh, resurgence shuns. We got three blinding inks. Why three blinding inks? Because negates are everything in this deck. Up next, we got three Baku Slumber. Why Baku Slumber? Because it's kind of like a blinding ink, but better for all cards. So it becomes easier to do to negate things. You're not so limited. And the only downside is that it just uncharges, which did kind of become the bite me in the tournament. But hey, it was better to get off some of those cards that uh, were in the way. Up next, we got for negates, we got the two sinkholes. Um, I um, kind of regretted putting this card in here just because I didn't see Mac too much. I kind of wanted to put it at three just because of uh, certain matchups, but I feel like it was kind of clunky and I regret putting a different card in there, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, that is kind of it for negates. Up next, we'll go for our evils. And the, uh, one of the evils we have is Dragonoid Maximus, of course, because it is Ventus Sync. We all know the trifecta ability, getting it off, um, you know, having three cores. That were pretty much you just wait till three, turn three to have Drago. Uh, or when you had Falcron, you would do wait to turn two, but hey, uh, this time it was kind of a little bit harder to get him off, but it was in the long run, uh, strong when he came out. I kind of almost nearly won every brawl when he came out besides a couple matchups, but hey, uh, that all just played out kind of weirdly with the one-on-one -on -one brawls, but up next we got Tuscar, of course, why? Because you can play Tuscar for free anytime you are using Maximus Dragon or any other five cost card, which we do have quite a bit of them in here. Uh, Ventus cards we got, uh, two Nature's Power. Now, I was very, very skeptical putting nature's power in here because i was afraid i was going to see some darkest falcons but i didn't see any and i mean i, I didn't play any so I, I was very very happy that that was the thing so very happy about that so i guess we'll move on from the basic ventus cards we have 
the Darkest Disaster. Obviously, you know, the sink, the 300 plus uh, 3 damage. And then you reveal a card, you draw one. Everybody knows sink is big boy, good stuff. So, yeah. We got the other uh, sink starters. We got Falling Strike. Of course, you know, here it is. The Falling Strike is a cost for plus 100 and reveal for plus 5 damage. But, hey, everybody knows what sink does. These are just very obviously cards here. We got the three Aqua Freeze Beam, and I know you keep seeing just one card, not a hex, but hey, it's okay. It bugs me. This is the one cost for plus 200 dam or 200 B, sorry, and then a 500 B if you reveal a five or higher. And what are all these sync cards if you're not going to be playing the one and only Howling Shell Bomb 5 3? Um, yeah, well, I, I really don't have to say much about it. All it does is let you reveal it. Well, when it's revealed, it plays for free, which is plus 1000. So hey, you can, and when you play this off of the uh, sync plays, you can play Tuscar and stuff. So hey, it's very, very good. Um, another sync starter, I guess we could say, is the, the Evo, the Hyper Batrix Ultra. And this is such a key component to the deck, being the one cost uh, gives him gives him up to 700 B, I think it's 100 more B than he actually is. So uh, the 8 damage, and then when it, it does open, it lets you reveal a 5 or higher to plus 300. So you're going to be activating uh, pretty much Howling for free in your hand. Uh, you don't have to just have the other starters. You can have the Evo or just have him on the field. So, yeah. Um... Uh, this last card, I'm kind of I kind of regretted putting in. This is the last minute decision because I last minute I found out it was a one on one, one out of one brawl. So, uh, the, the card is Darkest Shadow, and uh, the reason why I put it in there was because I heard that there was a Mono Ventus player, and he ended up winning the event by the way. But uh, Connor, yeah. So um, I put it in there because I was hoping to match him up, and honestly, knowing that everybody's playing Pyrus these days, I just kind of it's a good card to be putting in there, and knowing that you have only one brawl to win, and if I could get some cards out. It'd be very, very great, yeah. So, on to flips. I got the two Obscuring Innovate. Of course, you know why you play two Obscuring Innovate, because Aquas and Darkest are, like, the best factions, and if you have them in your deck, you might as well be playing this card. The only other better flip than this is the obvious three Pack the Darkness. Pack the Darkness is the best card. I don't care what anybody says. It's, like, the best card in the game, but hey, change my mind. Okay, well, yeah, I my record for this deck wasn't too well. I mean, like I said, um... I mean, it was decent. I did, like, get three out of four. I was, like, pretty pretty spot on. Pretty, pretty All my matches went pretty well, except for the times that I did break my flip cards. Knowing that it was a one out of one, that doesn't really upset me too much. I just felt a little lackluster for the games. I felt like there could have been more done and just more, like, just different matchups and different scenarios. It was just very, very, like, um... Nah, it wasn't bad. I had very little, a lot of fun and met a lot of great people, but it just felt like it wasn't to the fullest as it could have been. But hey, I'm not you know not mad about it. I've had fun. Congratulations to Car for winning that with Mono Ventus. That's pretty cool. I just didn't get to play him, and I actually feel a little salty about that because I kind of want to use Darkest Shadow. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me, you're not that guy. Okay. The honestly, um, um what do I need to say about Ventus Sync? I mean. You roll first with bat tricks. If usually most of the times I did draw the uh, hyper bat tricks, so it was pretty easy to get the evil off and then be able to. Usually, most of the time I break hard howling shell bomb anyways, so that was just really good to just have it there and be able to play it on the first turn and be up to like twenty six hundred B. So it was very very powerful in the first turn. So yeah, so let me know your thoughts and opinions. I guess on my build. Um, uh, like I said, this wasn't the build I played before. It was a little bit different. Um, I kind of regret not playing Swamp Traps instead of the uh, Darkest Shadows because, uh, honestly, I felt like there was a situation where I was playing against Jet and I uh, negated a card. And, uh, honestly, if it was a Swamp Trap because it had four energy, if I would have played it and negated that card, it would have just recharged. And then I would have been able to activate Sink uh, Sinkhole to negate his max. So... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have lost against him again, but hey, it's okay. You learn things, and um, next time, don't put in cards that you know that you might not use. So, with all that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions, how it is, how would you play Ventus Sync? Is my Ventus Sync build good? This obviously isn't the the top Ventus Sync build that I would play, but hey, given the tournament, it was just, I felt like it was going to be fun, and shout out to the Nerdy Fans for letting me use, actually, the, the two Evos. I only had one, it was Hex, but hey, you know... I had to, sorry, that's a little little note to, to to Greg. He knows I'm talking. Anyways, yeah, seriously, thank you for the letting me borrow the bat tricks. It was, you know, very, very kind of you. I you didn't need to do that, and I really appreciate it. So with all that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions and whatnot. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and obviously subscribe to your boy. Battle Thursday videos will be out this weekend. Hopefully we'll have more tournaments in Austin, San Antonio. I'll be you know playing more. So make sure to check out the uh the giveaway and you know.
keep it rolling and have a wonderful day.